Matija Mania is my first uh, important work, my first very personal work. I, I, I had done comics before and was uh, much published in Norway before uh, I started to study art because uh, I did comics when I was 12 years. I started doing comics and uh, I came to a point when where I was a really good uh, draftsman. I was good at drawing, but I really didn't have anything to tell, I felt. The, the main character in the book is uh, Mathieu. He's mm -hmm. a poet. Yes. And uh, his creative de development and uh, struggles, he's struggling, he has a author's blockade. He cannot yeah. write anymore, but and then you're depicting this through the book. We, we follow uh, the life of a person who is um, always on the edge. Yes. It's like for sure he's an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah. uh, he has problems with uh, yeah. alcohol, definitely. Because like, I, do, I don't know, there in almost every panel there is a bottle somewhere, if not in yeah. his hands, uh, around. He uses uh, alcohol as a part of his uh, artistic uh, process. And Mathieu is actually an uh, alter ego in many ways. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, yeah, I could really pick uh, parts of my own life uh, and put it into this uh, story. Uh, but I didn't want to use myself straight off, mm -hmm. so I m fictionalized it. And I kind of um, were thinking, yeah, I was in a, <laughs> in a very uh, avant-garde uh, uh, mood at the time. I thought, yeah, comics should be really art arty and uh, it should be something... I, I, w I really didn't want to do it commercial in any way. Mm -hmm. So the idea was, and then it struck me, yeah, uh, 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 independent comic about a poet that should be really really not commercial <laughs> but uh, was there like you said some referential elements uh, like I don't know first maybe the character from your sketchbook or a situation that happened to you that you started from or uh, did you put down really like you wrote a scenario first or well, no, actually not. It was uh, I was uh, doing pretty well as an uh, illustrator in Stockholm. I was doing stuff for many magazines, and, and someday uh, I did a, a drawing of a character that somehow fascinated me, and that was this guy with uh, with this intellectual kind of glasses. Uh, and uh, I thought, yeah, shit, there is this is something with this guy, you know. And I didn't really know what it was, and then out of this. Uh, character actually I started building the story you each other before personally or you also you, you came back from Stockholm to Oslo not because you you know that uh, no comprendo publishing exists there but then everything was fitting together in, in a Fa fairly quickly I would say first time I saw Lars was was uh, in a, in a uh, he was like this kind of wunderkind he he, um, he, <laughs> he was in a in a show, TV show for for uh, for uh, young people called uh, Halshu, half past six. It was every every day, I think, or every Friday, half past six is program for young people. And there was this uh, uh, report about this very talented uh, teenager who who did comics. Um, that is, I guess, mid mid eighties, maybe early early eighties, early eighties. Lars mid made his uh, first uh, his debut very as a very young man mm -hmm. or mm. almost a boy and <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> and the, the second time I, I remember we, uh, at a at a clash concert in oslo mm. uh, I, I saw them uh, wow that's the guy i saw on tv a few years ago <laughs> who, who was so good at doing comics and then it was really strange. A few, a few years later, we, uh, a friend of mine uh, and I had started this publishing house, and and uh, we were contacting him, uh, and we got to know each other. So it was, well, kind of a, yeah, a strange story. First part, debutante made in '96. Then the second part made in 2000, and the yeah. third part made in 2010. Yeah, there's a big uh, jump in time due to what we have uh, on the wall behind us. Okay, other projects coming in and yeah. becoming uh, more important. No, or because in 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 the group uh, at in the the artist group in around No Comprendo Press, I met Stefan Kvarnelan, and uh, we became quickly very good friends. And uh, 
w and it was kind of obvious after a while that we shared a very common interest in art. I had a plan to, f to finish it all the time, you know, I, I really didn't know, but I knew there was when I did the Debutanten and then I did the is Isman, and I knew it was like stages in a, in a series that would be concluded some, someday in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, of course, you can, you can easily see in the style that the uh, 10 years has passed, if you study it closely, it, I get more, you can see that I, I have done other ty kind of work, mm -hmm. that I've been working more realistic in, uh, in between, you know, so uh, it's more and more not so vivid or, or not so cubistic in a way, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. It means you were faithful to yourself and you, you were not going back and repairing uh, like images or retouching them, so it's really being oh. faithful to your... Yeah, and you know, the, the as you see the originals on the wall here, you will seldom find any uh, blank whiteouts or, or uh, you know, uh, new frames. I think maybe one time I did a new frame and mm -hmm. pasted it on the top. So uh, the labor process was extremely slow. Uh, you c I could work with a frame for a week maybe until I found, yes, then it's, that's how it was supposed to be. It's uh, <laughs> really not very um, economic. But uh, then you don't have to go back. The dialogues, how is it? Because like, okay, here probably the public is composed more of uh, animation, film uh, followers yeah. or artists. Yes. I d I'm not sure if anybody of you here has uh, experience with making comics. No, uh, so it's interesting also to understand a little bit more about the process of a how comic artist is, is putting down his art. So dialogues, you had somebody to try with, maybe your wife or... Uh, Aston or uh, anybody like a friend that you would just try if it works in, in real hmm. or no or never? I never did that actually but uh, I was really really into uh, making the dialogue as compact as possible. Not use many words but to be really really precise which in any way it's really down to the bone. Mm. Which also uh, brings us to his poetry because his poetry is also in that uh, very modernistic uh, like a haiku poem in a way. Mm. And uh, I forgot to mention that earlier, but actually all the poems in the first part of the book, and this is very, really, really, very important. It has to do with my wife, because when she was 17 years old, she was uh, writing poetry, mm -hmm. and she was really good at it, and she uh, uh, tried to uh, apply to do a poetry collection. Uh, they never published this book, because mm -hmm. but they eagered her to continue, and the poems are her poems. Okay, so she invented you little right? I, I got her, yeah. So I got her poems, she gave it to me, and I think that's why these poems are actually so good, because they really reflect mm. a young person's uh, uh, feelings. In inner inner, inner, inner state feelings, and I could not possibly be able to do those poems myself when I was in my uh, late uh, 20s. Mm -hmm. I would maybe <laughs> just read in Slovenian one short uh, haiku. U moj želodec stopaš z globoko zamrzenimi škorni. So it's really, really strong and this da Dadaism or, but I would say that here it's, it's, it's <laughs> also the book, the book, uh, yeah, actually sh I should understand, uh, translate, but gnetljiv sem kot voščena lutka, sem hermetičen kompost tvoji prsti iz žigajo u meni sladke luknje. It's great poetry actually, it's really yeah, yeah, strong. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's very modernistic and it's actually bullseye. But did you had a chance or had an idea or had anybody proposing you propose you already that uh, actually those should be film become animated film or a film or a fiction no. film? No, no, never actually. And uh, of course, uh, especially I think after I was in Jubilee in 2006, I was extremely inspired by by that visit. And I was like thinking seriously about maybe I should mm, go into that uh, area. But uh, for me, I think it's, it's, it's something with my style that mm. looks already animated. But is it possible to take this out and make it into a 3D world? I don't know. Mm. Maybe, maybe there is something that's uh, not possible in a way to, to keep the vision. But it, it's kind of grown into me mm. at a very early age when I was like a kid, I just refer to comics it was my world so it's really my my way of expressing expressing myself so i can't leave it it's it's like my main uh, my main uh, what do you call it stage in a way